Yo guys, what is up? I hope you're all doing great. So today, me and my cat Leon, we're gonna talk about getting an education in China. I'm basically gonna tell you what I've studied in China, where did I get my education from, and then I'm gonna share with you my thoughts on whether it is a good idea or not to choose China as the country where you're getting your higher education because we're gonna talk about higher education because that's what I did, I went to university in China. So I think I have a pretty unique perspective on going to school in China because I did it twice and both times it was very different. So the very first time I went to Fudan University and I did a one year long Chinese language program. During my first semester, I used to have classes in this building and during the break we would always come out from here and then we would go to the bakery. And it was not a degree, it was just a language program, so yeah, well, basically it was not a degree. But I did it in one of the best universities in the country, possibly the best university in Shanghai. Fudan University is basically like, sort of like Oxford of China. If you would tell anyone in China that you went to Fudan, everyone would know what Fudan is. And the second time around, three years later, I came back to China to do a MBA degree in luxury brand management at IFA Paris. IFA Paris is not a Chinese school, it's a French school. And the whole program was in English, our classes were in English. So basically it was like a very different thing to what I've done before at Fudan. And that also just really gave me opportunity to see a different side of China because obviously even though our teachers were foreigners and we were studying in English, we're still in China and our teachers, uh, most of them lived in China for years, for like 20, 25 years. So it was actually super interesting to be able to get their perspective on China and on Asia in general, the whole luxury industry. Um, okay, now I'm like getting too far into it. Okay, let's start from the beginning, Fudan University. So my first Chinese education was uh, the language program, Chinese Mandarin at Fudan University. Basically, when you choose to do a language program in China, I would imagine most of the time they're gonna be divided into semesters. I did two semesters and you could basically choose how many semesters uh, you wanna do. You can choose one semester, some people only stayed for one and some people stayed for two. I know people who stayed for like two years um, or maybe even longer some people to actually learn Chinese properly and be able to apply for for a actual degree after the language program. A lot of the language programs in China are not going to give you any degree after you're done. There is probably some sort of certificate which I don't even remember to be honest but what a lot of people do is that at the end they take HSK. HSK is like official Chinese government Chinese test which is basically what you use to prove at what level of Chinese you're at. After one year I did HSK free and not even one year I think I did it in like spring like May or something and I still had like three months of classes after it. So I would say if you do one semester it might be very difficult to pass HSK uh, free but if you do like one and a half then you can and if you study harder than I did you could probably get away with passing four and of course there are like brains who will pass I don't know what but I would say usually after a year of studying Chinese you should be able to pass three or even four I often get questions often get questions I hate when people say that and I say that myself whatever I get questions sometimes from people asking me if it's difficult to get into Fudan University. The answer is if you want to get into the language program, no, it's not difficult because it's just a language program. There is no degree at the end of it. But if you want to get to an actual degree, so bachelor's, master's, MBA at Fudan University, then yes, it is difficult because Fudan University is a good university and it's very competitive. So yeah. <laughs> That's the answer. It is difficult. Would I recommend the language program at Fudan University? Yes, I would. As I said, Fudan University is a very good school and the teachers were pretty good. We had classes in writing, listening, speaking, speaking, speaking. I don't remember anything else. But basically every single day you have 
four to five or even maybe up to six maybe six is a little too much you have good couple of hours of classes um, every single day and I must say you can choose between uh, like a normal speed or whatever an advanced Chinese uh, program I honestly don't think you need the advanced one or whatever it is called it's, it's just more hours so let's say the one that I did we studied for four hours per day and the advanced speed up whatever is like six or seven hours per day and i remember in the beginning thinking like oh only four hours like i should do the other one but no i'm, I'm glad i didn't do it because it's only four hours in the class but then you have to you know prepare at home and i would say if you're learning a new language especially if you're learning a language as complicated as chinese you should even spend more time studying by yourself at home that you spend in class so see the classes as just like like opportunity for you to practice what you have learned by yourself at home so unless you have some crazy plan to be really good in Chinese in half a year I don't think you need more than four hours per day at least that's my opinion also at the end I want to add that a lot of people told me that when it comes to language programs they're all pretty similar meaning it doesn't really matter which uni you go to learning a language is like learning a language you know they're just all similar um, so it doesn't really matter if you go to like a really good university like Fudan or if you just like go somewhere else the second time around I studied in China I came back to China after three years to start my MBA degree and I was basically supposed to start in Shanghai and then after uh, two semesters we're supposed to move for another two semesters to Paris and finish up in Paris so as I said this time around it was very different because well first of all I was not at a Chinese university anymore IFA Paris is a French school and it is a very small school compared to Fudan. Fudan is a gigantic old uh, university. I think there are around 30, 40, even maybe up to 50,000 students at Fudan. There are also different campuses. I would imagine at the main one there must be like at least 30,000 students. It's like a whole little village. I mean the campus is like a whole little village and IFA Paris is just one school but it's basically located in the campus of the Shanghai Engineering University so in IFA Paris all my classes were in English and as I said majority of my teachers were foreigners or majority all of them were actually foreigners but there are Chinese teachers at IFA Paris as well I did a degree in English at IFA Paris but there are also degrees in Chinese so um, you can choose to do a degree in Chinese if you speak Chinese so obviously learning in English in China uh, and not really particularly learning about China of course we had a lot of like case studies and stuff like that where we had to do things that had to do with China but in general we were just learning about well luxury industry and of course China came in the picture a lot because we were in China and all our teachers were working they would just you know come to school to teach the class and then they were all working people so that was amazing actually like that was like the the coolest thing about this degree really that you know we got to hear about real world from these people who were working in the real world they're not just like professors who you know been just like teaching for 50 years uh so that's something i really liked and i personally found it super interesting to get this perspective on china and on asia from foreigners who have been working in not only china majority of our teachers actually started in japan back in the days and then um, a lot of them lived all over asia so for me that was super interesting because you know if, if i ever go to china i will be a foreigner working in china so it was really cool to, to hear their stories and their perspectives and in general I would say uh, the degree I did luxury brand management it is a very interesting degree to study in both Paris and China because obviously it is so different and nowadays luxury industry is obviously booming in China so yeah I feel like I'm just like repeating interesting interesting but it was it was really interesting <laughs> I'm really happy that I did it anyways I have a video where I sort of like answer questions about IFA Paris I'll link it here and I also have a video about Fudan University but I filmed it so long ago and I, I, I didn't know how to YouTube back then and now I know how to YouTube let's hope okay so do I regret getting my education in China no 
Of course not. I absolutely love my experience at Fudan and I absolutely love my experience at IFA Paris. Uh, I often get que Okay, again, no, I don't often get questions. Sometimes I get questions. <laughs> when I get a question from people asking me if they should go to China, if getting an, ed an education in China is a good idea, it is a little bit difficult for me to answer because the thing is, obviously China is big and it all depends where you're getting that education and of course it also depends on what you are looking for but if you are considering going to university in China and getting an actual degree not only a language program obviously if you're doing a language program then I guess it's like self-explanatory if you're studying if you're learning Chinese it is a good idea to go to China pretty much wherever you go doesn't matter which university you choose really because learning a language in the local country is obviously the best and just being emerged in this language you know going out on the streets and talking to people of course you're gonna learn so much more than you would learn at home but when it comes to actual degrees i would say that what makes the biggest difference is often if the degree is taught in Chinese or in English. So there are obviously really good schools like Fudan University, Jiao Tong University, uh, Beijing University, where the level of classes taught in English is of course very good. But there are also universities where the level definitely decreases because classes are taught in English. And English is just not the native language used in China. So I think that's pretty normal that, you know, classes taught in the language of China, which is Chinese, are better than classes taught in English. What I also heard from people who studied in English in China is that sometimes what is an issue is group work. People do speak English, your professor speaks English in class, but then when you're doing group work, if majority of your group is Chinese, they will still prefer speaking their own language to each other. Um, yeah, so that's just something to keep in mind. I think to be honest, I think that is just the case everywhere, pretty much. If you're in a country where English is not the first language, people will probably switch into their own language and breaks and etc. Uh, of course, not everyone, but that's just something to keep in mind. At the end, I also want to add that if you're a foreigner and you're choosing to go to China to study at a university, what you get is not only the education you get in class, it's not only the traditional form of education, because I feel like you know, you get so much more. You are in a foreign country and you learn about its culture and also another thing is that you are usually in very multicultural environments with people from all around the world and you also learn about their countries and their cultures. So I think in general by choosing to study not only in China, everywhere really, just abroad, not in your own country, you get an education that you wouldn't get at your home university in your home country because you're just exposed to a foreign culture multiple foreign cultures usually and it just teaches you a lot about life that you probably wouldn't learn in your home country okay so i hope this video was helpful for you guys if you have any questions please let me know uh, maybe this video was like all over the place but Subscribe if you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you soon.